Konnichiwa. Hello everyone. This is Christopher. And uh, this is my continuing series on coffee. I'm not wearing my hat today. Sorry, I forgot it. Um, today, what I'd like to do is pick up on some questions that I received on the last video from Nona and Claudia. So the first question is, how do I know what a good coffee is going to be when I'm picking it? Um, so uh, these today, I saw, showed you these last time. These are some uh, mandolin uh, lintong uh, sonars. Um, very beautiful coffee. A little bit on the expensive side. Uh, I took a chance on those um, last month. Uh, but they're they're beautifully green and there are very few defects in here um, They've been picked through very well and they've been processed in um, in a way that's unusual in Sumatra in that area of, of Indonesia um, These are some very beautiful pea berries from Thailand that some friends sent me um, I feel very honored to have a coffee as beautiful as this um, all the coffees that I've had from Thailand are, have been very, very nice. So, um, and this big bag and also this bag over here um, are coffee Arabica from Laos. And when I first started coffee roasting several years ago, uh, this uh, was one of my favorites. But then two years ago, all the suppliers stopped having it. Um, so I finally found a new supplier for this because my base that I've been using since the Laos ran out is no longer available from anyone. So I'm hoping that this will be as wonderful as the old stuff that I was used to. Um, I don't know if the camera will do justice to this, but this isn't as gorgeous maybe as the mandolin, but um, it roasts pretty well. So uh, sometimes uh, some of the coffees that kind of look miserable and maybe have a little bit more uh, in the way of defects and things in them um, have incredibly good tastes um, and even sometimes better than the beautiful green ones like this one. So uh, coming back to this question, uh, I think picking coffee is kind of like going to a horse race and picking a winner. So I'm not a gambler, but uh, I am a gambler with coffee, I guess I have to admit. Uh, so there's some risk involved every time I order coffee uh, that maybe even from the same supplier and the same exact description of coffee that like a day later he's using a different bag and it was a different set of berries. Uh, a lot of the coffees that I buy are not from a single farm with the, this one is from a single farm but uh, even from a single farm they can have different trees that have different genetic varieties or maybe different exposure to sun or other properties so the taste might vary um, even from one bag to the next bag from a given farm as I said these two coffees are not from a particular farm but a particular region um, and there's probably even more kind of fluctuation in there, but uh, I've had very good luck with um, coffees that maybe uh, wouldn't, don't demand the prices that a single farm's coffee that gets very well known might. Um, there are lots of variables, um, and, and I guess flavor is incredibly subjective. My own flavors over 30, 40 years of coffee drinking have changed considerably. When I first came to Japan in 1985, I was really weaned off of Brazilian coffees, I think, and, you know, Central American, uh, South American um, coffees. And when I came here in 1985, nobody had cell phones, and we all met in kisaten, in coffee places. A lot of them roasted their own stuff or, you know, had good sources to incredibly wonderful coffee. Uh, but what was popular back then in, 19, in the 1980s was African and Asian coffee, which I just was not used to back at that point. Um, and now I think that a lot of Japanese 
are into Central American and South American coffees, and I'm the opposite. I'm kind of into Africans and Asians these days. Uh, that's just sort of my where I am right now. So what am I looking for in flavor in coffee? I'm looking for something that I would describe as a natural sweetness um, with no sugar or milk or anything added. I can taste um, a sweetness that I think comes from the beans and also comes from the roasting process. Uh, and another thing is that I'm looking for is a really strong body. So it's it's a balancing equation in my mind between those two variables. Um, when I'm looking for coffee, I usually think about what I've enjoyed in the past. So um, I don't buy coffee that's roasted anymore. Um, but uh, a good starting point, and certainly a starting point for me, was what I enjoyed in the past. And a lot of times you can look on the back of the package. It's a package of some coffee. I have a coffee shrine in the other room, which has uh, labels from all kinds of coffee that, from places that I've enjoyed or other people have sent me. So a lot of times on the label, it'll tell you where the coffee's from. So this says, this is a Brio Coffee Works made in Vermont. Um, New World Mocha Java, so one of the blends that I really have loved reliably is a, mocha, a good Mocha Java. And this um, particular roaster's Mocha Java has Ethiopian and Java in it. So that's a good hint. In fact, there are lots more hints in here um, about the process being washed and the, ele well, cultivar and things like the, the genetic properties of the coffee. So. Um, I would start with things like this because a lot of times on the back of the coffee, legally, they have to tell you where the coffee is from, if only the country of origin. So that could give you a great hint about um, what kinds of coffees you like. And I really do like blending coffee, so I'm not afraid of um, even, you know, maybe with something from some uh, one given farm like this. It's kind of, as we say in Japanese, multi-naya waste to mix it with a little mandolin. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm actually a little bit more, you know, maybe there are properties in this and this that can complement each other. Uh, I tend to roast um, a single variety in one batch and my blends are after the roasting. So you, you could ex certainly experiment with um, getting coffee from the supermarket even, or, or somebody's roaster, um, and, uh, and blending things on your own and seeing what you like. Uh, I would start simple. I, I tend to like to blend two different kinds of coffee. Um, a lot of people like to blend more types of coffee, and a lot of times when you look on the package, there'll be more different types of coffee because they want to try to preserve a flavor over time, even if some of the coffees that they're using change um, over time. Uh, so my uh, this uh, comes into Nona's question about you know how much do I buy and things like that. I tend to buy a good kilogram because I find I roast 250 grams on a batch and so that gives me four attempts. And as you've seen my roasting technique is fairly primitive so I can control a lot of the variables like the heat and the speed that I am whisking and the ventilation, um, but um, it's still a fairly primitive process. So um, sometimes it can, takes me a couple times to, uh, to get the roasting, what we call a roasting profile, uh, right, for that particular coffee. So I tend to like to buy a kilo, which is about two pounds, and uh, if I like it, then a couple weeks later, I'll probably turn around and order more. In the case of this louse, and actually the mandolin that's sitting here, I took a risk on both of those. Um, well, I knew this coffee from before, and I know this coffee from before. Uh, I don't know this particular batch, uh, and I didn't know this batch, but I knew that I liked them, so I just went for the five kilograms because... Uh, uh, it's, it's worth taking the risk at that point. So thank you very much for all of your questions and likes and uh, just your views of these. Um, and I 
very much welcome more questions and comments from all of you. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Matane.